that today we will discuss the green function for the wave equation which will be the last of the equations of mathematical physics for which we find the fundamental green function solution. So, the wave equation uh, as you know could be written for scalar fields, vector fields and so on and so forth. We will start with the scalar field because we just want to find the green function and the equation I have in mind is of the form 1 over c squared partial derivative with respect to time minus del squared times some function of r and t equal to a given function of r and t. So, this acts as a source for this disturbance and the idea is to compute this disturbance here f of r and t. Now, this problem uh, unlike the earlier problems is uh, a mathematically a hyperbolic differential equation because what happens here is that there is a minus sign here and the space and time indices uh, variables have exactly the same order of derivative both are second order derivatives and in the classification of uh, differential partial differential equations of the second order this is a hyperbolic equation. It has its own implications in particular signals can propagate. So, there are propagating wave solutions for this e such an equation. As usual our interest is in finding the fundamental green function for this operator <coughs> namely what is the inverse of this operator here with suitable boundary conditions the natural boundary condition for instance. Now, <coughs> what we would like to argue on physical grounds is that the green function we want to select is one that is going to ensure that before you switch on g there is no f at all. In other words before you switch on the source of this wave there is no disturbance f there is no resultant disturbance. This is called the principle of causality you want to make sure that the cause precedes the effect always. So, the general solution that we have in mind is going to be of the form f of r comma t equal to an integral and now we might as well do this in an arbitrary number of dimensions d spatial dimensions. So, d d r prime and then an integral d t prime this fashion times a green function of r and t given r prime t prime and then the source at r prime t prime. So, that is the general form of this uh, solution that we are interested in and this green function here of this wave operator it is the inverse of this operator must satisfy must reflect the fact that we want a causal solution. So, this quantity we expect should disappear if t prime is greater than t. So, it would exist only as long as t is greater than t prime. So, in general I would like to look for a solution which has this built into it. So, I would like to have a step function in t this vanishes for t less than t prime multiplied by some function of these variables and as usual since this operator is invariant under translation in t invariant as under r goes to r minus r prime this thing here is going to satisfy a delta function which has exactly the same properties. So, I expect that the solution would look like r minus r prime comma t minus t prime. So, I expect to find this k this propagator k such that it is a function of just the differences r minus r prime t minus t prime we need to see how that comes out. Now, as usual the equation satisfied by g is precisely the same as this original differential equation with delta functions on the right hand side. So, g satisfies 1 over c squared minus del squared g of uh, r t r prime t prime equal to a d dimensional delta function r prime and then t minus t prime on this side both in space and time ok. Now, as usual as always we look for a solution such that g goes to 0 as r minus r prime goes to infinity 
So, I want something that dies down at spatial infinity as we have done in all the earlier cases. This is the natural boundary condition. We also want something uh, where g equal to 0 and since it is a second order differential equation equal to 0 for t <coughs> less than t prime. So, you want causality and this puts in the requirement of causality. So, we are going to look for a green function which satisfies this boundary condition and these, in, these conditions, initial conditions for t minus t prime equal to 0. For less than that you want it to be equal to 0 identically. Hmm? So, now to cut a long story short as always this thing here is a function only of r minus r prime and t minus t prime because the boundary conditions are the differential operator itself is and the inhomogeneous term also is such a function. So, as always we will set r minus r equal to r minus r prime and let us put tau equal to t minus t prime. Then this equation could be written as 1 over c squared d 2 over d tau 2 minus del with respect to capital R squared g of r tau equal to delta function d dimensional of this vector r delta of tau in this fashion okay. and we want to solve this equation. Now the obvious thing to do is to do a Fourier transform both with respect to space as well as with respect to time you do a double Fourier transform and this will ensure that this differential equation becomes an algebraic equation for the transform double transform of g. So, let us write that down. Let's so, as always let us put uh, g of r tau equal to 1 over 2 pi to the power d d d in k space and then a 1 over 2 pi as for the time variable d tau out here e to the power i k dot r minus omega tau and then g tilde of k and omega. Notice that the Fourier transform convention where I have a function of coordinate is an integral over k e to the power i k x with the plus sign and then the inverse will have a minus sign for the time I invert it that is convenient because this sort of thing represents some wave moving in the k direction as t increases okay. So, that is a minor matter but the 2 pi convention I keep exactly as it is to avoid confusion hmm. and then what well the delta function delta d of r delta of tau is equal to 1 over 2 pi to the power d integral d d k 1 over 2 pi integral d tau e to the power i k dot r minus omega tau. That is a representation of the delta function okay, with 1 as a Fourier transform of the delta function. I put those in into the wave equation and then equate coefficients of e to the i k dot r minus omega tau as always and you can see what is going to happen. This derivative with respect to tau each time you differentiate with respect to tau you produce a minus i omega in the denom in the you bring down in minus i omega. So, when you square it you get minus i squared omega squared or minus omega squared. Mm -hmm. So, there is going to be a minus omega squared over c squared and then the del r squared is just going to produce a minus k squared and then minus del r squared becomes a plus k squared. So, this is going to give me a plus k squared g tilde of k and omega is equal to 1 on the right hand side. This side here. So, this immediately implies that g tilde of k and omega is equal to mm, well let us write this as multiply through by c squared. So, it is c squared over omega squared minus c squared k squared with a minus sign. 
that is it. Okay. Just make sure I have not made a sign mistake, uh, that is okay. right. So, this green function is now solvable, this is equal to 1 over 2 pi to the d, d d k e to the i k dot r, let us take that out, this guy here and then a 1 over 2 pi integral d d omega it's oh sorry this is a d omega i am integrating over omega here okay ah oh, here too d omega okay the transform variable okay so it's that multiplied by this is minus infinity to infinity e to the power minus i omega tau uh, divided by omega squared minus c squared k squared and I believe there is a minus c squared outside so minus c squared times that. That is the integral we have to do. Okay. Now as always as it stands the integral makes no sense at all. It is divergent because you can see that it has poles on the real axis at plus or minus c k where k is the magnitude of the vector k. Hmm. We make sense out of it by making an i epsilon prescription as always and that i epsilon prescription should be such that the conditions you want on this green function be satisfied. Now this is an omega integral the conjugate of the time variable. So therefore the conditions that you place on it with respect to causality that is the condition you would like to invoke. You would like to make sure that this green function vanishes identically for tau less than 0 because remember tau is t minus t prime. So now what is going to happen? Well, in the omega plane the contour of integration is like that and you have two poles at plus or minus c k. I could move them up or down but I want to ensure that this contour is such that this, uh, this integral is such that the value of this g is identically 0 for tau less than 0. Okay. Now what does that mean? Well if tau is less than 0 this guy is negative this minus sign goes away and then if you close this omega in which half plane should you close it? You close it in the upper half plane because then that is with this i is going to produce an extra minus sign. So it is clear that for tau less than 0 you must close in the upper half plane and for tau greater than 0 you are compelled to close it in the lower half plane. Hmm. But we want the answer to be 0 for tau greater less than 0. This means there should be no poles in the upper half plane at all. Right. You need to close the contour in this fashion just as a mnemonic for tau less than 0 and you are going to close it like this in this fashion for tau greater than 0. And whatever you do to these poles, it should be such that this integral is 0 and of course it is 0 if it encloses no singularity at all, hmm? which means both the poles have to be displaced in the lower half plane. Hmm? So the correct way to define this green function is to define it as equal to a limit epsilon goes to 0 from above hmm? of something where the poles are displaced in the lower half plane. In other words you have omega plus i epsilon whole squared minus c squared k squared. Then one pole is here at k minus i epsilon c k minus i epsilon and the other pole is here symmetrically at minus c k minus i epsilon and then when I close the contour in this manner here. I am going to pick up a non-zero value but there is nothing up here so for tau less than 0 it is identically 0 this integral. So it promptly tells us this is equal to minus c squared over 2 pi to the power d integral d d k e to the i k dot r and then so let us now put that in let us put that in as minus c squared theta of tau because we just showed that when tau is negative this answer is identically 0. So let us put that step function in and then let us do see what this does when you close it in this fashion. 
When I close it here, I am going to pick up both these contributions with a minus 2 pi i because it is being uh, traversed each of these contours, each of these poles is being encircled in the negative sense. So there is an extra minus sign that goes away and then there is a 2 pi i over 2 pi, the 2 pi's will cancel out obligingly and then uh, e to the power minus i omega is c k, so omega c k tau that is this term divided by you have essentially omega minus c k and omega plus c k and you multiply by omega minus c k and then put omega equal to c k right. So this gives you a 2 c k out here plus e to the power i c k tau divided by minus 2 c k and that is it okay. So let us collect these guys together uh, you have a 2 c k and then a minus sign up there. and that is C, one of them cancels here, uh, there is a 2 here and you end up with a K here okay and the 2 pi's go away and there is an I here okay that is it, hmm? that is it I have taken all factors into account but this fellow is minus 2 I sin C K tau. So let us put that in, and the i goes away, so 2 sin c k tau and the 2 goes away. Let us put this here so we do not forget this factor, that is it. So that is the answer, okay. We have done the omega integral and we have got this theta function out which takes care of causality. So this, uh, this guy here uh, takes care. and you are left with the job of doing this integral. Now of course you have to tell me in how many dimensions you are working because that will tell you what this phase space factor is and what this is going to look like. So there is an explicit dimension dependence out here but it is causal, this green function is causal. Actually we are going to have to get something more out of this because if you start, start with uh, a point r prime at t equal to some time t prime there is a source which acts at the point r prime at time t prime for you to detect the effect at r at time t it is clear enough time must elapse t must be sufficiently larger than t prime such that this is this signal has time to propagate from one place to the other right. So what you are going to do is to actually see it only for t greater than or equal to t prime plus mod r minus r prime over c where c is the speed with which this propagates. You are going to have not only t greater than t prime but t must be greater than this number greater than or equal to this number or else you do not see that you will not see the signal to propagate faster than c okay and that violates causality once again. Uh, we have not said that c is the speed of light in vacuum of course it applies to that but this is true in general all we are saying is that there is causal retarded response this response such that t is greater than or equal to t prime plus that extra piece is called retarded response. It takes time, finite time for a signal to propagate with a speed v or c whatever. Okay. So that should come out. We got this theta function out fairly easily by this i epsilon prescription but we need to also see if that is automatically going to emerge or not. Okay. So let us see. Now let us work uh, things out specifically in different dimensionalities to see what is going to happen and then there is a little bit of a surprise. Very briefly what will happen is the way this uh, signal propagates and what is this green function after all? It is the signal corresponding to a unit impulse at T prime at the point R prime or if you like in capital R at the origin at time tau equal to 0. Hmm? So it is the response to this unit impulse this delta function at that point. Now it will turn out that in spaces of even dimensionality when d is even you have a very different kind of propagation than when you have d odd 
and that emerges, it comes entirely from this factor. And we will see how this magic happens in a minute. So, let us do it in one dimension first. Remember that in one dimension, what I call k, so you have just the x axis, there is the origin here and what I call k should really be called k is really equal to modulus of k because in one dimension you just have one coordinate conjugate and what I call the magnitude of the vector is just the modulus of k. So, in one dimension we have g and now let me put 1 here to show that it is in one dimension of r and tau. By now it should be fairly obvious to you from previous experience that the answer is going to be a function only of the magnitude of this vector r because the whole thing is rotationally invariant. <coughs> so, not only is g a scalar, but it is also going to depend only on the magnitude of r. Okay. So, we might as well write that down, but let me leave it as it is for a moment. Let me write it like this g of r and tau is equal to c times theta of tau divided by 2 pi, it is in one dimension and then there is just a d k and this runs minus infinity to infinity that is the volume element in one dimensional space e to the i k x let me call capital X equal to uh, x minus x prime the x component of capital R okay. some capital X uh, sin c mod k tau over mod k. Okay. I should be careful make it magnitude, but of course this is an even function of k. So, I can forget about the mod, I can remove this, it is the same thing okay. and I need to do this integral. As you know the singularity at k equal to 0 is avoided by the fact that you have a sign here, this goes to 1 and then this guy is going to oscillate in some fashion. Mm -hmm. Now, you want the green function to be real that is for sure. So, if you write this as cos k x plus i sin k x, the cosine part as you can see disappears right, uh, sorry the cosine part remains and the sin part disappears right. So, the imaginary part disappears as it should the green function is a real number, real fu uh, function. So, you permit me to write this as this thing here as cos k x by symmetry this is running from minus infinity to infinity <coughs> cos is an even function that is an even function. So, it contributes the sign vanishes. Mm -hmm. So, let us write this as cos k x sin c k tau cos k x divided by k in this fashion. So, let us put a 2 here and a 2 here and this thing here I write as a sum of two signs okay. <coughs> So, this is equal to c theta of tau over 4 pi an integral minus infinity to infinity d k Oh, before I do that this is a symmetric function. So, let me just write it as an integral from 0 to infinity with a factor of 2. So, this 2 goes away and then I have this 0 to infinity. So, this is back to a 2 pi and this is 0 to infinity d k 2 sin a cos b that is of course, sin a plus b plus sin a minus b. So, this is sin c tau plus x k over k plus sin c tau minus x k over k. Now, what does this give you? it is pi over 2 provided that quantity is positive right.
and ditto here for this fellow also. So, G 1 of uh, in this case not R, but X this is just X and tau equal to C times theta of tau over 2 pi and then uh, pi over 2 times the sine of C tau plus x, the sine of that quantity plus the sine of C tau minus x in this fashion times a pi over 2 in this fashion and that is it. So, let us kill the pi and we get C tau over 4 times this guy here. Now, what does this look like as a function of capital X? Tau is remember positive because this thing sees to it that for tau less than 0 the whole thing vanishes. So, tau is some positive number and then you want the sign of this. So, that is equal to if you plot this here as a function of X for tau positive some fixed tau then this number is plus 1 as long as x is bigger than greater than minus c tau right. So, you have minus c tau here and then it is this fellow in this fashion and it is equal to minus 1 the rest of the way. So, this is minus c tau this is 1 and this is minus 1 and what about sin of c tau minus x? when x is bigger than c tau this is going to be minus 1 right. So, beyond this point it is going to be minus 1 on this side and below that point it is going to be plus 1 in this fashion ok. I am extremely unhappy because this is suggesting now that the answer is when you superpose these two guys that the answer lies that is right that is exactly what you want this is precisely what you want exactly. So, the answer therefore, it is 0 beyond these two points these two fellows add up and it is equal to 1 plus 1 in between here. So, there is a factor 2 which cuts off between this point and that point right. So, we can rewrite this perfect. So, there is a factor 2 and it says C theta of tau divided by 2 and then it is equal to a theta function of C tau minus mod x. x must lie between minus C tau and plus C tau. otherwise there is no signal that is exactly what you want because you cannot reach this point here at all and have any signal because it takes finite time for it to go. So, it is clear this will tell you that uh, C tau is greater than x minus x prime modulus greater than equal to mod x minus x prime hmm, which is exactly what you want because it says that uh, you will not be able to reach there is an inequality in t as you can see this is uh, over c. So, t minus t prime greater than mod x minus x prime over c or t is greater than equal to t prime plus this that is exactly what you want ok by causality plus the fact that you have retarded response ok and it is come out automatically as you can see we maneuvered, we maneuvered with this integral, but buried in that integral buried in this thing here is this uh, nice feature that it respects the fact that you have a finite velocity of propagation and that is emerged automatically. Okay. Notice another thing I leave you to check the physical dimensions of these quantities this has dimensions of a velocity those are all dimensional guys. So, I leave you to check that g indeed has the dimensionality of velocity in this case. 
Notice that what this implies is that the response stays forever. Okay. You started with a delta function that was an infinitely strong signal, but that is now spread out. So, for all time such that t is greater than t prime plus mod x minus x prime over c, this guy here is a constant. This green function is a constant. That is a peculiarity of one dimension. So, in this in, in a sense what happens is that if there is this infinitely bright spark on the x axis at t equal to 0 and you are sitting here, it will reach you after time t which is given by the distance divided by c and after that there will be a steady illumination due to this infinitely strong source in the beginning. This is a peculiarity of one dimension. Okay. You are not violating energy conservation, you are not doing any of those things. And yet you have this. Pardon me. As we've seen a waveguide. There's no. There's no way. There's no. Uh, no. 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 Why do. Why do you say we see that in a waveguide? So there is no power loss. We see. If we. Yeah. Confine. There's no power loss because of the boundary conditions in the wave and so on and so forth. But what I'm saying is, in one dimension and one dimension alone, what starts off as a delta function spike doesn't pass you as a delta function spike. So, it is not as if there is a pulse there and that pulse is travelling and passes you as a pulse. It does not do that at all. It just gets moved out, it becomes constant. Okay. That is a peculiarity of one dimension. Hmm. But now we got to see what happens in two dimensions and that is a little harder to do. Let us look at 2 and of course, the most important case is d equal to 3. And then just for mathematical curiosity, we would like to see what happens in d greater than 3, 4, 5, 6 dimensions etcetera. Mm. So, let us look at d equal to 2 and what was the green function? G2 of r and tau was equal to, there was a c, you have to remind me of the factors now, there was automatically a theta of tau and then divided by 2 pi, 2 pi, is it 2 pi? Okay, and then there was a d 2 k a to the i k dot r this passion and then sin c tau k over k, where k is the magnitude of the vector k in this case that is the two dimensional case. Hmm? Pardon me? 2 pi whole squared, 2 pi squared good. Okay. Now, of course, in this case in this case, this, this is again a function only of the magnitude of this r. This thing here, the obvious thing to do is to go to polar coordinates, plane polar coordinates and choose the x axis along the direction of the vector r. So, you are going to get uh, this equal to c theta of tau over 2 pi whole squared integral 0 to infinity d k and then there is a factor k which cancels against this guy hmm, times 0 to 2 pi azimuthal angle d phi. Hmm. Oh, let us write the sin c k tau sin sin c tau k and then there is a 0 to 2 pi d phi e to the power i k r cos phi. That is the integral. Well, this is not an elementary integral. We could do this in many ways. You could expand this in a power series. You get functions, uh, powers of cos phi from 0 to pi, 2 pi and you can convert that. You can do those integrals, write it in terms of various gamma functions, factorials and so on. The result is this quantity here is 2 pi times j 0 of k r. where j 0 is the Bessel function of the first kind of order 0. Okay. After you do the algebra, this is what emerges. And then you are not home yet because you still have some problems to face just as we faced an infrared divergence when we talked about the uh, green function for the Laplacian operator. Similarly, d equal to 2 is a very strange dimensionality. You will face a problem, but you can overcome it. So, this is c times theta of tau divided by 2 pi, one of the 2 pi's goes away and then you have an integral 0 to infinity d k sin c tau k
j0 of kr in this fashion. Okay. Now, we can rewrite this as the imaginary part of e to the i c tau k times j0 the look up table. So, you can do this integral, but the quickest way to do this is a small trick. I can write this as the imaginary part of uh, e to the i c tau k okay, and then pretend that this is the analytic continuation to the point c tau k c tau of the Laplace transform of this quantity here 0 to infinity. If I write e to the minus s k then it is a Laplace transform right. But now if I put s equal to i c tau minus i c tau I have got the analytic continuation of the Laplace transform. So, that is one way of doing this integral defining it giving it meaning and so on because these are all tricky integrals you can see they are not absolutely convergent because this function here at infinity goes down like 1 over square root of k r k and that is not enough to make it converge but then it changes sign this changes sign that changes sign and then of course you have a convergent integral like a Dirichlet integral. So, to cut a long story short I will just write the answer down and then we will come back and look at it a little more in detail and interpret it. Turns out this quantity here apart from say various constants. So, there is a c theta of tau etcetera and then there is uh, some numerical factor here and then there is a 1 over square root of c square tau squared minus r squared. So, there is this 1 over square root factor see it? and then it dies down as you can see as t increases at any point at any given point space point in this fashion, but this ensures again that the response is retarded because this says c tau is greater than r which is t greater than t t prime t prime t must be greater than equal to t prime plus mod r over c. So, you have a diminishing effect here now it is actually decreasing. So, you start off at a large value, but then this signal gradually decreases as time increases if you are at some fixed point this flash here passes through at a certain the retarded time, but then it goes on persisting. So, there is an afterglow if you like and that goes on forever, but its intensity its amplitude decreases like 1 over time in this case that too is a peculiarity of two dimensions, but you can see it is very very different from what the original delta function pulse was. So, you started with the delta function pulse at the origin and then wherever you are this thing does not reach you as a delta function at all, but it reaches you as 1 over the square root this kind of signal here in 2. The important question now is what happens in d equal to 3 what does it look like and we will see next time that in d equal to 3 and d equal to 3 is the only dimensionality where it happens this delta function pulse reaches you as a delta function pulse. Okay. So, you have this uh, thing which uh, started off at this point it travels and wherever you are it passes you as a delta function pulse passes by, hmm, which has deep implications because this means you can communicate it means you can start and start stop a signal and you receive this also as a start and a stop a sharply defined signal without distortion. We are only talking about vacuum and we are talking about the simplest wave equation, but uh, many other factors which could change that, but the fact is this is possible only in three dimensions.